So I said, don't take the elevator, take the stairs. So he runs down the stairs. So he goes running out the apartment. But before he leaves the apartment, he turns around, he say, yo, when I get that hammer though, what you want me to do? You want me to give it to them? I said, to push my new movie that I got out. You heard called Body Parts, the story of turquoise serial killer in the projects, a true crime story. You heard it's an hour and a half long and it's exclusively on Patreon. So I need y'all true Gen Pop supporters to come over to the link that's in the description of this video and come watch that movie because it's exclusive, bruh. You heard it's so exclusive, I couldn't just drop it on YouTube. It's a lot of stuff on the internet about the legacy of one of the most notorious housing projects in Brooklyn, LG, Lafayette Gardens. I think it's time we hear that story from those who actually created that legacy. So get ready. Gen Pop is in the building. The real story of LG. We was like Batman and Robin, you know? And nut was Batman, and I was Robin. See, but you got to remember this, lad. Batman needed Robin, you feel me? Batman needed Robin. So me and him together was a dynamic duo. You said that, that London, Connecticut spot, that was really wise spot, and he put you on to that? Yeah, yeah, that was see wise. Wise had family out there. We had a cousin named Kai Wong. Ah, so Wise went out there with him. You know, was out there for a little bit. But Wise caught a situation out there. He was putting some work. He couldn't go back out there no more. So he left it alone. You know what I mean? He said, fuck it. You know, he came back to the project because Wise was, Wise was in the project. The, the project was his, you know what I mean? The, the fun he had it, he had it. Wise was a, a good dude, you know what I mean? Like a, a real dude, you know, he was, he was solid. He was solid. No, no fuck boy shit around him. He ain't, he ain't with the goofy shit. If you're a goofy, he's gonna let you know you're a goofy, you know what I mean? If you're an awful, you know what I mean? You have to be straight up on them, bro, you know? I respect him for that. So one day he came up to me, he said, hey, Wise and my brother was in the same class in, in Catholic school. Remember I told you, we went to Catholic school. You know, we all went to Catholic school. They came from a good family. We had a good family. You know, we were just, you know, from the same hood. And and he came up to me because he always should watch me, you know, watch my moves and said, like, yo, you out here, you know, this LG, you know, getting this money. I'm going to put you on to this town of London. I think you'd be good out there. I'd be like, yeah, I'll go. He said, you know, I, I see that hustle in you, bro. You know, you ain't with the other shit. You don't be with the off his shit, you know, you know, you just do you. And he had respect, him and my brother had, it was cool. So the respect that he had for my brother, he gave me the torch. He could have gave it to anybody. Why he picked me, what he saw in me, or the potentials he knew I probably had, he gave me, he gave me the torch. And he gave me the info, gave me the phone number to do it. And I was, I was scared, you know, I was young, 17. I said, damn, this is it, $20? I'm doing this down here. I gotta come up with a lot for my mom, you know what I mean? I'm telling my mom. You know, so I had to come up with some more crazy lies. I was going to a basketball camp and it was a tournament. And Ma, I wanna be in there, please. Is it Queens? I had Hedo come with me. We stayed at Hedo's uncle house. And we had a we had a a, a, a a fiend pick up the phone and call my mom like she was Hedo's uncle. Oh, it was crazy, so, <laughs> you know? But we pulled it off. Pulled it off. I got on that train, kid. And that's how I ended up in New London. With Wise. Wise put me onto that town. You know? And, and I never forget that. And then I came home. You feel me? When I came home, I started going back and forth, back and forth. I started getting my money up. Now I'm getting my money up on bike now. You know? But you see, Wise is a good looking man. I blessed him. You know? I blessed him, right? I think I gave him a stack. I think after a while, I started so uh, he he just put you on the he just put you onto the town. He just put you onto the town for you to just do you. Do me. That's it. He that's wasn't really he cool. wasn't expecting no money from you or nothing. 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 He ain't asked for nothing. He ain't do nothing. He said you just gotta get your own wares. And the reason why I'm giving it to you like that, and mind you, there was a lot of people on that project, but 
he just seen it. He seen it in me. He seen it in me. He wasn't wrong. And he wasn't wrong. You know, he wasn't wrong. You know, he 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 seen it in me. He knew that that I had the, the potential to to go out there and, and do right in that town and get right. You know, and he knew it. And he ain't asked for nothing, homie. He ain't asked for nothing, lads. I swear, that's how really was with him and my brother. Like I said, was mad tight. It was mad tight. You know what I mean? And it was, it was like, you know, that was, man, they just go to bed together. Like, why well, I was getting money. Like, you know what I mean? He, he had his outlet, you know? He was thinking they was out there going to Midtown, getting it. To my getting it, you know? And my brother, and then Wise well, had his little team, and you know, they, they, was, they, they was, it was, it was love, man. And he passed me that torch and asked for nothing, but I had to get my own wins, you know? And that's when I went to my man Moose. He blessed me, that's when I, they was hitting me with captions at the time. And that's before the whole my man, little man nut shit, you know? But I was getting the captions at the time. But I was still eating with that. You know, because remember I told you, it was going for $20 out there and five in here. So dude was just charging me the $5 for the capsule in New York. So I'm making $15 profit for each capsule. So I'm coming up, if you do it right. But you know, you got a lot of jokers that ain't know how to do it. And go out there and just fuck it up and come back in. And blow their bread on my outfit, this, that, and I. I came back, I gave that back. I did that, and out of all the money I made, he gave me some more shit. And I said, hey, take this now, now I'm buying these right now. I'm paying a front for these capsules now. And I was doing like that. Even though I was still, you know, young, I ain't know no better about getting the weight and all that, but, you know, I was still coming up. Then I came up a few times, and I threw wise and stack. What's this for? Said, That's for the love, bro. That's for the love. He's like, oh, good looking, my nigga, you know? We have to do that. That's how real wise was, you know? The good dude, man. Like, LG was love, man. That was love. Like, we, 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 we looked out for each other back then. You know? In the eight, I think we looked out for each other. You know? Then, I'm going to tell you the situation, how, how real it was. Then, then I started eating, right? And then, I started, I left my man Moose, and I started fucking with this dude from Kingston and Troop. Two brothers, Nuki and Duca. You know, they, they selling their weight, they doing their thing, you know. Nuki had a banging ass Cherokee, the old school Cherokee. You know, like an 80, 85, 86 Cherokee, whatever. It was like, it was like 1988. Yeah, like an 80s from the box Cherokee joints with the main system, you know. The main system, you know, that shit, you hear that shit three blocks away, bro. You know, so he was like, yo, he's selling for five stacks. So I go up there. You know, and I'm up there with the bros, and I'm like, yo, you up in the gambling joint? And he like, you know, give me some time, I gotta make some moves. Yo, I got there like around 4 o'clock, and I was in that gambling joint till like 8.30, 9 o'clock. I'm like, damn, bro, what the fuck? You know, then he finally said, come on, let's go. We gonna go get the truck, and I gotta go make a move right now. Then we gonna, I'm gonna clear the truck out, and you can take it. I said, all right, cool. So now, we go. They drive me to a block I was, where I was at. I was somewhere in Bad Stock. I'd be lying if I tell you the block. We pull up in the block, but it was where he lived at. We lived in his house. So he runs in the house. Now we get in the truck. His man get in the front and another dude get in the back with me. You know what I mean? So we riding, system on, you know, boom, we riding. We pull up to his crib. And I know that was the crib because I used to do re up from the homie, you know? I used to go get two, you know, go cop from him. So now he goes in there, I'm figuring he's going to see these dudes in the truck, you know what I mean? So him and the passenger get out. I'm in the back seat with some old school dude next to me. Our homie, when they go in, he, turn, he reaches over to the front and turn the music up all the way, real loud. I'm like, damn, this shit loud already, what the fuck? They be trying to, you know? But I ain't, I'm still vibing, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know? The next thing I know, I got a gun in my head. Feel me? He put the hammer to my head to my, give me the money, short, give me the money. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So I dig in my pocket, I give him 1200. I'm on you, I had 1200 in my pants pocket. Any stick up kid that you can rob, my nigga, and a 17, 18 year old kid, 17 year old kid, give me 1200, that's a come up. You know what I mean? But then he hit me with nine. I want it all. You know what I want. Where the rest at? How he know I had. The rest, you know what I mean? What the fuck? I just gave you twelve hundred. What you mean with a rest at? So then he started patting me down and felt it in my jacket. I have five bands. Take that. 
and he jumps out and told me to get out and run. I'm like, man, I'm not running, man. They're gonna shoot me. So he just let one off, boom. When he let one off, I looked down. I was standing in like boy, it was like boy on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought I was hit and I dipped to the side, he dipped off. I go back to the crib, I'm like, yo, Pookie, man, what up? The man just struck me. He like, what? He playing dumb? I don't know what to believe, son, you know? But then he drives me back home. He looked at his man. Matter of fact, he looked at the kid that was in the house with him. She said, that's some bullshit, man. I told you that's my man out there. So I kind of believe Nuki. I believe this story, you know? Because he looked at Nuki, he's right in front of face. He's your, he's your beat, man. You gonna do that, man. Why you gonna have your man do that to my man? Because he knew I was buying a truck off him. So he drives me back to the hood. Nuki in the Jeep. That I supposed to have blood, you know what I mean? So when we get there, I see Wise and my man Shambo on the corner. Yo, nigga just stuck me a lot. My wise went upstairs, go get the hammers. I'm back downstairs and made Nuki drive us to the kid house. You know what I mean? That's how that's how that's how tough he was. That's how that's how the love that we have for each other in, in LG. You know what I mean? And none of the situation, none at all. He went and got the Mac and the other hammer and made him drove us to the kid house. And, 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 and some plays started happening there, bump, you know what I mean? Leave it at that, and then came back to the hood, you know? And the next day, Luki came to see me with a 250 and be like, yo, bro, this is for you. Yo, bro, this is for you, you know what I mean? You're lost, you know what I mean? Take that, and my bro said, give it back, you know what I mean? I said, all right. You dressed me with 250, I ran off. I said, this is me, man. We even now. Now we even. You know what I mean? Now we even, bro. Now we even. You know, this is five scratch they took from me. I got my five back with that 250. We even. We done. What you mean? 250, 250 grams? Yeah, he gave me 250 grams. It was like 20, it was like, you know, like 27 grams. He gave me 250 grams. He said, that it was a court. It, it added up to about like 5,000 to buy that at that time. So he was like, take that. Get your money back and see me back. And then you could, you could keep on doing business. And I was reading up with them niggas about like that. Buying a biggie, a big A for 250, 200 grand. And I'm just coming up. So he blessed me with the 250. Because he seen how the homies came through and handled, you know. And he couldn't get the gear. He got lucky. But, you know, you know, he, he felt some pain. But, you know, um, he came back around the way. And he gave me a 250 the next day. Cause he knew I went up there with Wise, I went up to my man Sambo, and they named his ring, you know what I mean? And he said, yo, I don't wanna lose you guys, uh, you know, you know, we do business. But I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't like that vibe no more. So I took my 250, I said, we good, bro. You know, and he expected me to pay him back. I was like, nah, we good, we even. Let's call it even. And that's when I stopped messing with them. And that's what now was like, you know, come fuck with me. Come see my peoples. We be good. And that's when he told me the whole game about chefing and everything like that. You know what I mean? That's when I said, no, I'm gonna stay with my LG family. But when I see like go distance and go left, shit don't go right. Cause there's a lot of snakes in the grass. And like I said, that's when our project was, we was born. We all made sure we was all right. And then I ended up catching the bed. You know what I mean? I ended up going up north and I thought two to six quick fast, you know? How you got how you got trapped off? What you got caught? Got caught with some drugs? I got caught with a hammer. I got caught with a hammer that had a drug charge. You know, and I went up north. But you had an open drug charge where you got caught with the hammer? Yeah, I had an open drug charge and then I got caught with a hammer. Wait, where, where you got caught with the hammer at? I got caught in front of my projects coming up the building. Because that was right after that incident with these dudes. You know, so I had to, so I was going to the store. It was like nine in the morning. I'm going to the store. My son told me, let me bring my hammer. Cause like, we just, we just, we just blazed with these dudes. And you know, I just want to be safe and sorry. So I put the hammer on me and I go down side. And when I'm coming back from the store, I see the housing police coming out. Not that they was dressed in housing uniforms. Like they was the maintenance man, but I knew they was police. Mm. And they see me dip out like, I, I, I froze and, I, and I, they see my hand move. I threw the hammer in the bushes. So I did that. Wrong move, you know what I mean? I panicked. I fumbled at the goal line, you know how that shit go? And they, <laughs> they went up in the bushes, found me. 
So they sent me up north. I did a two to six. You know, I was young. You know what I mean? I wasn't built for all that. I wasn't ready. I wasn't How old ready. was you at that time? Huh? How old was you, you said? I was 17 years old when I went out. I was young. And mind you, it was it was like right after Easter. So now I'm on the island with the with the with the with the Sergio Tassini sweatsuit on, the Air Max, the Swatch watch. I'm looking like food. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I weighed a buck thirty five, you know? And, and and I'm up in that motherfucker, you know? And luckily, you know, the other home, my man Sambo was on the island, you know. A few other homies in the island. Sambo had the island on lock. You know, I ain't gonna find it that time. At that time, he had it on lock. Who, talking about know? Sambo? Sambo, yeah, he had it on lock. You know, he had it on lock. And I can't do it, let niggas know. And then knowledge from Tompkins was there, God bless the dad, you know. Got Tony from East New York was there, because he used to mess with Tawana for my projects. So God Tony was on the island, you know. They showed love, but I wasn't built like that at that time, you know. The island made me man up quick, you know. Because my brother was out there doing all of that. My brother would hold me down. My brother was always here. I was just trying to get my money and, and you know, stick and move. I wasn't with the bullshit. You know, I wasn't with the running around carrying this and doing that. Now, if I got to protect myself, my back is the wall, of course. At that time, at least I thought I did. But when I went to the island, I wasn't like that. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck, you know? So now, but then, one time, another story, some kids ran up in my cell was going to get me. And they had me. They had me. I'm um, Scotty, little Puerto Rican pay. Excuse me, little Puerto Rican pay, Scotty, no team Scotty, and a few other dudes. Ran up in the cell with the bangs and everything. Give it up. Yo, know, well, I'm like, what the fuck? I turn around, they see a picture on my sink of my brother's son. And they said, where you know green eyes from? So that's my brother. I said, hold up. That's your brother. Call that nigga right now. I said, oh shit. So I go to the jack. And I said, big boy, man, if you never answer that phone, man, answer that motherfucker now, boy. It's like eight in the morning. He answered that phone, boy, he talked to them kids, man. It was all love, son. And can I tell you, my brother was in the pre now, so he was doing. He let them know who I was, what I was. And I did the easiest bid ever after that, man. That was the only encounter I had, bad encounter I had in prison, so. Cause that, 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 and I just started seeing it. I learned how to jail. I learned how to move. I learned how to, to act to shit, react to shit, the things to do and not to do. And I was just a quick analyzer, quick. And it was all love, you know what I mean? And then, you know, I got to man up. I go, man, you ain't doing, you know, what, what? I had, to, I had to get tough. I had to get tough real quick. Young kids get tough quick. It ain't cool. It ain't cool. And it break a lot of motherfuckers and, and some make it, but you know, I'm lucky that I'm the one that was the ones that made it, you know? Cause I seen a lot of bad come out of that. A lot of bad, you know? But I just was certain, I put myself around the right people and I grew up in the right area and I knew the right bros, man. And then, I manned up, and then my heart got big. And then I was like, you know, mm, you know, never was a bully, never was a, you know, this and that, manage motherfucker, but they know Mikey held his own. Mikey gonna hold us down. And when I came home that two to six, I was a whole different person. And now the times have changed now, bro. You know, the young dudes in the front, they getting big now. My man Fruit, my man Butter, a little man, Porter Rock, you know? Biz and all the dudes in the front, they had the front smash, but they was growing up different than I did. I was growing up trying to get that dollar and cool, get the woman and chill. They was busting that gun. They was letting it go, you know? So now the project is changing a little bit, you know what I mean? Now the young niggas in the front changing and, and world's coming up, you know? World is coming up and, you know, and, 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 and Wise had it, but I think during my time when I went to prison, which, you know, in other parts, you know, breaking down the LG story, you're gonna hear parts when I was gone of what happened and how it happened, how the world became right, you know? 
So when I came home, they got me. Mind you, I've been home a hot minute. But you know, the whole time I was in prison last, I was thinking about New London. Mm. You feel me? <laughs> I ain't have my one in New London. I gotta get back to New London. You knew you was you knew you was in there missing all type of paper. Yes. So what I did, I just did that. I got back to New London, lad. And it was over. You know, Nut was doing his little bed. I think he was up in the bar. You know, like he caught a little bed. And he went to green, I believe, and I think with the green and the comps, they do a little bad, whatever. But I came home, and I was home like, no, Nut was home, a matter of fact, in the town still. And when I came home, Nut was out here doing it. He had the 535 black joint. Never forget that shit. They still remember that to the day, with the Momos on it. Oof. So, boy, you killer her. Come through around the corner playing that joke. She come and talk to me. <laughs> the remix, I was like, yo! You know what I mean? That's shit you should play in that motherfucker, you know what I mean? That's mm. that sexy shit, you know? <laughs> and I was like, damn! And he blessed me. He gave me a hundred grand and said, do you, bro? She knew me right. I said, love, bro. I went off to the races. Went straight, you went straight to Connecticut? What? I ain't come back. When I came back last, I was driving. When I came back, I was driving. I came back with the act, Ford or Act Legend. You was on parole or you, or what? Yeah, I was on parole. I was just in and out, in and out, in and out. Sticking and moving, in and out. I had a two to six. My PO was cool. And he didn't really bother me like that. And I wasn't doing nothing, you know what I mean? I had it the first time. I talked that talk. And I'd rather, every time they come my house business, he let me know. I'll be there Wednesday. I come home. Like I said, it was only a two hour away. I was only two hours away. I'm in and out, in and out. I was flipping, flipping, flipping. I bought me an Ike Legend. I was home like five months, man. I bought me an Ike Legend, my first car, man. And then World and them getting money now. So World had to act like it was love. I tell you, it was love, man. World had to go Ike Legend coupe. My man Inf, God bless you, from East New York, little infinite. He had the red Ike Legend coupe. And mind you, I met a chick uptown, Janine. She helped change me up a little bit too because I started staying uptown. 125th and St. Nick. And I met some Harlem niggas up that way. Then I started connecting dots with them dudes, you know? And, and it's opening up our, opening up our, you know, our lane. And now they coming uptown to see me. They pulling up, who these fucking niggas, man? Like for the build of four act legend coops, all of us jumping out, going to the muse. Going to the clubs, the red zone, them days, you know what I mean? Home base, pulling up, heavy, deep. But they know who we were. They know who we were, the little LG boys. They know we was all living, shining, doing us, you know? Living good, man. Eating good. Looking like no money, you know? We was eating. It was a, it was a good time to be alive, brother. I'll tell you that much, you know what I mean? When you was in Connecticut, like when you went out there, you ain't never have no problems with no Connecticut niggas out there or niggas knew who you was and who you was fucking with. Nah, I'm not, I'm gonna say it. niggas knew who I was. It was just that the way I moved last, you gotta know how to move, man. Like these kids these days, you too, they don't think. You gotta think before you move, you know? And make every move count. And at a young age, Growing up, and like I said, with nothing, with nothing, and wise, and all of us, yo, us little LG dudes, that's why that's why we like that, because we used to plan shit out. We think like, 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 like we play chess, man. Like, you know, move like you're playing chess, man. Think it out. Because you make that move, that one more move, you get your bitch took it. You know? And and that's how we do. So I went out there. I seen dudes come out there on some Debo shit. They ain't make it long. They found them behind us, down the block, in the woods burnt, the car burnt, open the truck, body in the truck. You know, you gotta know how to move. So when I went out there, I went out there first doing me, just, you know, watching the scenery, learning shit, getting cool with people doing this, you know, sticking and moving. But then as time gets on, 
then I see what they lacking. And what they lacking at, that's where I come. And we could do this uh, here. We all eat, you know? But that don't work for everybody, because, you know, we got some people on there, whatever. But I came out there nice, and I had my team with me. So they knew. It was mostly Puerto Ricans where you was at? Nah, it was mixed. It was mixed. It was more of these black people. You know, New London, Connecticut, a lot of New York dudes down there. A lot of New York dudes. A lot of, a lot of New York dudes. You know? But I went there and took over that motherfucking town. You know, I agree with Puerto Rican Mikey. Little Mikey. You know what I mean? Killing him. Then a few months later, did that. I was the first Puerto Rican to come to the hood with the black GS300. I was probably like in the top three. The top three to come in the hood. You talking about in Brooklyn or out there? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In New York. I was the first, and I was in the top three in Brooklyn. I think JG had the first one. Shabon had one. And it was either me or Casino Mike. My man Casino Mike had one too. But, like I said, I came through with mine. Rimmed up. Like, you know, coming through, like, you know, as like so, we was repping, man. Which, how y'all was, you just copping them shit straight cash, certified pre-owned, know how you was getting them? Cash. My man, we, we, we know a car dealership, and we go, and we drop, take cash on it. But they were doing the paperwork as if you're doing it. You know, they wrecked it out. Nothing knew somebody that was doing it. So now I had that. And he had the, um, the 535 at the Maxima, and then, that was that cash was coming so fast, last man. In New London, man. I had an ES at first, and I was with the Harlem chick. And she was like, "Yo, you hustling? You doing this?" Some kid pulled up. I never forget it, kid. She broke my heart. <laughs> she broke my heart. I had an ES three hundred. She said, "Yo, you supposed to have that? You out there hustling? I love this nigga. The, the great GS three hundred just came out. I'm like, damn, that was the first spaceship in the hood." My ES was good, I had the ES 300, kid, relax it, that shit was fire. But when she hit me with that last, I was like, yo! It was hard, son. When I got the black joint, came, and I ain't, when I pulled it out, I ain't put it in the street yet. I said, she ain't ready. I took that shit straight to the motherfucking shop. To Rayco in Queens, if you know about cars, and you get money, you take that shit to Rayco in Queens Boulevard. They put the Adonis rims on it, the gold packers, the tent. Man, that shit came out, man. The niggas was looking at me like, who the fuck is the niggas? George was hitting the floor. We was jumping out. You know what I mean? And then that's when Nut came home. Nut did a little bit, he came home. And when he came home, I picked him up this time. He was like, oh man, the back, brother. He just took off, man. We ain't never looked back, son. And then what really took us to another level, we was at Studio 54. Nut had got shot in the club. And he had a big lawsuit, huh? He got like 700,000. Well, he got shot by a stray bullet? No, yeah, nah, it was in the club, an argument happened with him. And it wasn't even his beef, kid. But the kid was so drunk, he said, I'll be back. And he was arguing with some other kids. So another, the other kid like, yo, man, don't worry about that nigga drunk, man. So the other kid was a big little, big kid too. But he had dipped off. And when he had dipped off, he came back to nut. He thought he was arguing with nut. This shit was drunk as a motherfucker. I'm, we all standing right there. They said, what's up now, yo? I'm not like, what? The fuck are you talking to? And when nut was about to smack the nigga or whatever, he was like, I ain't fighting your big ass. He pulled out. He's like, oh shit. He let one go, boom. And he chased nut, nut trying to dip him on the bar and he chased him, boom, boom, boom. And he dipped. And we looking for nut. He behind the bar and he got hit in the back. So dude had a hammer in the club, in Studio 54. And hit my boy on the back. I don't even know what that was. It was, like, it was like a humble, like, you know what I mean? You know, what the fuck that came from? It wasn't even for him, it was arguing with someone else. We saw the argument, you know? But then, two years later after that, he had a lawsuit, man, 700,000 700, cash. That's when shit went crazy, son. Now, what about the 850? Diamonds and that, it was crazy, son. It was crazy. Plus, we was getting money already. We was getting money, so it was like, it was a taste of a new taste, man. Like, now we ain't looking back no more. 
Like when we go places, we do us, and we like they know who we want. They know who we want. They know who he was. You know, everyone knew that. You know, whether you love them or you hate them, you have to respect them. You know, that we still had the LG love. We're still going. We still had the crew, the homies, the bros. Everyone was still in, in the game. You know, everyone. Everyone was in the race. But then, like I said, in the late '90s, that's when shit got sour. And you know. She just started going left. You know, it started going left. But we still, you know, that's when I fell back from the projects a little bit, you know? I started falling back and staying uptown. And staying in my lane and staying in New London and doing what I do. So I had the town. I had the town. Anybody tell you that? I had that town. So when the bro got that 700K. When they got that 700K, man, they put eight fifties. Rolex, we was hood rich, you know? We was hood rich. The niggas you know? cop up heavier or niggas ain't even need to cop up heavier? We, of course we were heavier. Of course we did that, but we was up. We was up anyway. But now we all the way up, you know? Like, like the, 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 the gold Rolexes turned to platinum Rolexes, you know? Upgrade, we just upgraded, you know? We upgraded, you know? Upgraded. You said, <laughs> you said, you said nigga went and copped the 850? Yeah, 850, 850. The Range Rovers, 850s. You know, going out. You know, cause late not all the, all the ladies, man. All, 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 the, all the ladies love that, you know? So you just being around nothing, and his presence, bitches don't come. And I had my own lane, and I was doing me, and I was getting the pictures, you know what I mean? So I was smooth doing my thing, young Puerto Rican Mikey, you know? Whatever coming through fly. They always, you see nothing, you see me. I ain't too far behind. You see me, that ain't too far behind. You know? So, we was like Batman and Robin, you know? And nut was Batman, and I was Robin. See, but you got to remember this, lad. Batman needed Robin, you feel me? Facts. Batman, Batman needed Robin. So me and him together was a dynamic duo. You know? That's how we did it. Like, I knew how to calm nut down. But nut was a loose cannon. Now, if we was both loose like that, man, we would've, we would've, our story would've been over with a long time ago. But I knew how to calm him down. I knew how to just sit down and calm him, cool him. Now, when it's time to turn, we gonna turn. Motherfucking right, we gonna turn. But, that's why me and him was like that. That's why me and him was like that. That's why we always had that respect for each other. But that was used to be, we was a motherfucker, hard head, like a young kid who was a bully. He was nice with the hands. He wasn't scared to bust his gun. You know, we had a situation in the projects. You know, what people in our projects that we happen to fight, do this, do that, that, but we end up, you know, squashing it and getting it right. You know, or trying to make it right. A lot of animosity came in the game, and nothing wise had their little situations. You know, which I I, I try to resolve, but I couldn't because it was getting too much. You know, it got too crazy. They always had their little situations, you know, which I ain't like. But I was cool with both of them. And even though Nut was my man, Wise was my man too. But Nut was my, you know, home base. You know what I mean? That was that was my I was vibing with Nut. You know what I mean? But it was just awkward. Like if I was to come around and, you know, as years went by, them two arguing, but but why saying what's up to me, like it's awkward, you know, it was awkward, man. That's when you know it was awkward. But, you know, make a long story short, man, you know, that we just was, we was on a different level than other niggas, man. We was on a different level, man. We come to, not like the party a lot, so we go out a lot. The tunnel, get up in there, find the bar out. You know, that was, that's what he do. That's what he do. He knew all the industry dudes. You know, they have respect for him. They show nothing but love for him. You know? We was outside, man. And we was dripped up, iced out, pulling up, had cribs, you know, we was living. Bitches in every borough, Bronx, Manhattan, Harlem, Queens, Philadelphia. We was traveling, man. We was just going around. And then I had my Connecticut. Like I said, that was me. That was me out there. You know, some other kids out there doing that. But, you know what I mean? That was me, you know? 
and and we was living man hard like you know and then he had his shit in dc and, and va maryland and when we come together we come together the mic i need fifty thousand, man come here i need to handle this i need 20 he's there there take that take that come back i get it back i get him a comeback get it here whatever like that's how we did it we ain't break bread together but me and together you know what i mean on that tip it ain't mixed but we knew that but that's when the backstabbing comes all that other shit and you see you see homies killing each other best friends killing each other nah so we ain't go down that lane what you mean y'all never was y'all never was getting money off the same drugs y'all just was doing y'all separate thing yes i was doing me he was doing him if he ever needed me i got him if he ever need if i ever need him he got him. You that's, know, that's, so I drove before and all that shit, but, you know, I take this, fuck money up, do this, do that. I go here, now we're not doing that, you know? But we had so much respect and love for each other that we was there for each other. Like, if I'm going to read and I got a, I got a, I got a, 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 a situation and got some better numbers, yo, homie, what up? I'm going to see Give me a buck. Give me, give me 200. Give me a buck 50. I'm putting a buck 50. We're going to see my man. You know what I mean? That's how we do it. Then we get it back, do it, bust it down, boom, boom. And like I said, he was a master, master, master guy. So it it shut up for me, do what I do, whatever. If I want extras, I'm whatever, you know? And that's how we do it. And then when we come back, when he come back, and I'm back in town, you back in town, we link. Now we, you know, we good. We get everybody out there good, snap, whatever. Now we coming back. Now we, now we chill. Now we party for a week straight. We hang in. Then that Sunday night come, I gotta go to CT, bro. I gotta go handle my shit. Let's go. I need you back. But we stayed in touch every day. We was tuned every day. When we was in New York, we was rocking like that. That was my bro. Like I said, when you seen him, you seen me, man. You know? Every time he got touched, man, every situation he did, I was there. I was always with him. You know? Every time we, we was everywhere, man. When you seen him, you saw me, man. You know, good solid dude, man. You know, LG raised some good motherfuckers, man. Will was a good kid too, man. You know, Will was a real good kid, man. He just, he just, you know, in the early, in the late '90s, man. I don't know what happened, man. Some shit just changed, man. And, and dudes' minds got poisoned, kid. And, and good dudes, man. We was all good, man. Like him and Nut had a good relationship. Nut and Will. They had a good friendship, man. And Will was getting his money too, man. You know, Will was getting his money too, but then just went left, man. And that's the story that you hear with the, the CNB and all that just went left. And I wasn't there, like I said, I went up north, and when I went up north, I went to Harlem. I can't elaborate all on that. But I can tell you before all that, it was all love, man. And even when that happened, I know it was, it was hard and hard for me. And after Wise passed away, there was no turning back after that. There was no turning back. There was no trying to fix it no more. And that's when the, you know, pain was pain, you know? 